Okay, so good morning from my side also. Um, so I'm, I'm Tom Hengel, I'm, I'm from uh, Wachim University, ISRIC uh, World Soil Information Center. Um, and so I usually, usually start this geostat by, you know, telling a story. Um, and so, uh, by the way, don't expect today, I mean, I see you already, already opening laptops and loading your R session, but so don't expect that we'll do um, um, lots of training today. So today is an uh, introduction day mainly. Um, except in the at six o'clock, we have a we have a, a two parallel training sessions, and and is optional. So if you feel like I'm very advanced, I don't want to listen to this, then don't come. And if you feel like yeah, I I, I have to uh, improve my skills, I have to catch up with these things, then you should absolutely come. Um, so one, imp I I will start also. I will be telling. I like to when I tell the story, I use the slides, but I use uh, lots of web pages and things. So I'll be jumping uh, up and down. So. You will see that's kind of my way of teaching anyway. Um, so the first thing I'll start, I'll show you where the slides are. Uh, so the slides that you see here, so if you go to the uh, home page of this uh, uh, Geostat Summer School, you will see that there's a, uh, there's a daily program. And you can see there's a link. So that's the thing that I'm talking about now. So there's a link. And if you follow that link, um, then you will get, uh, so that's exactly the, the topic of, of this block is to tell you a story about Geostat. So what's the purpose of Geostat? What's the philosophy of Geostat? And how did it evolve? And you can see that there are slides here. I, I use now, since like two, three years ago, I started using Google, Google Docs, Google Apps. So uh, all my slides are, can be embedded and things. So it goes easy. And actually I can also change I can change when some people ask me something, I change the slides and you just have to remember where the slides are and the, the change is automatic, so they have to upload and download. So, uh, and you can quickly just uh, uh, browse all the slides. So if you, if, you, if you find this not so interesting, you can just quickly go through the slides and then open your laptop and start checking your emails. No, I'm just joking. Um, So, by the way, we are live broadcasting this, so I also have to want to say uh, welcome to these people that are somewhere in the world and uh, that maybe are in a different time zone and you're trying to follow this uh, summer school. So, uh, we, will, uh, we will try to broadcast uh, most of the lectures. We won't broadcast the things which are uh, logistical talks or um, uh, discussion uh, sessions, and we are not going to broadcast the last day of the course. Uh, but everything else, I think, especially the lectures we're going to broadcast. For, so for those of you who are following uh, somewhere in the world, so also welcome to Geostat. Now, this is a, uh, so every Geostat is a bit of adventure. Uh, there's a, uh, usually there's a lots of fun and it gets quite informal. And so I have, a, I have also uh, my special sentiment for Geostat. Um, um, this, this picture is from the Geostat 2009 in Split in Croatia. It was about this time, it was about 30 degrees. We were in a really beautiful spot and the institute was in the uh, park um, and they, they had their own beach. So, so we will go in a lunch break, we will go and you know you could swim, it was warm and uh, you will swim and then you will go back, to, uh, um, wipe yourself off and then just go back to the office and so, so that was, uh, the people say, oh, this is a proper summer school. So, uh, but then in uh, Landau, in Germany, we had uh, one week of rain. And it wasn't, usually they will expect also nice weather there, but we had a uh, one week of rain. And we, we, we want to do also sports activities, and we actually had two sports activities at that time, and it just didn't work. And we kept on postponing them, and we said, okay, just drop it, no sports. It's not going to, there's no, and I told them, sorry, this was no summer school, it was just cool. Um, so in Bergen, I will expect it will be, uh, I, I heard today that's going to be nice weather, and so I think it will be a proper summer school, but nevertheless, carry the jacket always with you, uh, it gets a bit cooler in the evening. Um, I also hope you all manage to find, I see uh, most of you are here, I didn't count, uh, but I, I, I will assume you all managed to find a place, and so I think the uh, information package was uh, really uh, prepared, and we, we tried to balance it, so we, we kept on sending small packs of information all the time. Um, so 
I'm glad you all made it. We had situations where people will lose a train and, and it's a very, a very sh and they lose a flight, for example, and it's a very short time. And if you miss, for example, two days, you almost miss the whole summer school. Uh, and then in this situation, we usually will say, okay, just, you know, come and join the next geostat. Usually people get like, oh, I would really like, I like these guys. I know what they're doing. I really want to come. I said, yeah, that's fine. You know, it's not the last geostat. There's, sometimes we do two times a year geostat. Uh, so it's not like Olympics, you know, if you miss it now and, you know, you're out of sports in four years. So it, it happens all the time. Um, by the way, there's this uh, World Cup uh, this week. And four years ago, we were in Plasencia and there was also World Cup in that week. And imagine we were in Spain and Spain was winning. And they were winning and winning and these towns went crazy. And it was it was a perfect match. Norway is not in the in the World Cup, but I think some of your countries are playing, and I think you'll be also occupied a bit with that. Um, uh, so luckily, the matches are in Brazil, so I think the, the earliest match starts around 7 or 8 uh, in the afternoon, so I think that's, that's a good match also. So, uh, Okay, something about Geostat. So I don't know how much you know, so um, I feel obliged at least to tell you a bit of a story and the uh, main ideas and main uh, uh, principles of how we work. So I think it's very important to discuss this at the beginning so it becomes very clear, uh, especially some rules and regulations. So, so we are an, a non-profit specialist block course, um, and we are run, this is a course run by people that develop software. So that's kind of the main idea. Um, we want to promote, of course, the use of open source uh, software in uh, teaching and research. And this is just a list of software that we typically use. Uh, so, of course, it starts with R, and then uh, there's a um, list of uh, open source GI software. But we also use uh, Google Earth. So whoever follows the PlotKML, for example, training, I will also you know, teach you uh, how to use, do some tricks with Google Earth. Um, all of you, I guess you're on the RCGO. Is somebody here that's not on RCGO? Not subscribed? So my guess is uh, most of you also heard about this uh, school. We are either we are the mailing list or maybe we are a colleague. Um, who, who really just found this course uh, just by, you know, searching, Googling, whatever? You never heard of these people, okay? Okay, so there's quite some. Okay, good. Um, uh, so, so you have this RCGO, the mailing list, which is about 4,000 people, 5,000 people? 3,000 3, people. And it's quite active. And um, it's, uh, for me, it's an amazing place to see, um, you know, so many ideas flowing and people reacting within, within a few hours. And if you write the right question, if it's if you well-prepared question, it's relevant. And you just, you, it's like a chain reaction. It starts going, you know, this guy has opinion, this guy has opinion. And I, I tried it. I tried RCGO for my work, professional work. I tried it about two, three times. And I will ask a question, and I, I really do my homework to prepare it properly. And, I, and they really solve it. And so these people do work for you. Amazing. And uh, so one of, some of these people that did the work for you, they're also here down. Uh, but I, I find it also, it's a... Uh, um, you know, that's a virtual world, but it's also nice to be a physical world. So uh, we don't just talk about just technical stuff. We, we can also talk about a bit broader and we can get to know each other. So it's a, it's a, kind, it's a kind of physical realization of that mailing list a bit. Uh, what's specific about Geostat? Uh, so uh, I, I started Geostat in 2007, I think. Um, and what, what I discovered at that time is that I'm a more a GIS person, so I work with GIS software. And then my supervisor uh, from ITC in Enschede in the Netherlands, David Rossiter, he told me, oh, you have to do, you have to check hard, that's future. That was in 2001. And at that time, there was no spatial support, there was no uh, GDEL for R. And so when I, I looked at that, I said, well, this is not, I cannot do any GIS things, it's not going to, and then I dropped it. So I, I knew about R in 2001 already, but I, I dropped it and I, I didn't look at it for the next three years. So I kept on doing some GIS things and I, want, I wanted to do more common type of programs. So I was aware of Arc, Arc Info and 
I was working at the ITC on, with Ilvis, and so I started doing like a command line programming. And then in 2004, I realized, okay, now there's, a, this, there's these packages for spatial data that Roger made the RG doll. And then I said, okay, let me try now. And then I started doing it. But uh, very early, I discovered that there's, there's like kind of a two worlds. There's the, the open source GIS world, and there's the R world that does spatial analysis. And I felt like, wow, these two worlds are like kind of a bit in parallel. And I felt like, what about if I bring some of these people that do a spatial R and some of these people that do open source GS and I bring it together and I see, okay, guys, you know, how can we, how can we fuse that? How can we uh, combine it? And so it, it, I remember one of the first times when uh, Marcus Nettele, who's one of the main developers of GS, he came to teach in, I'm not sure, I think it's 2000, 2010 when he came to teach and he was just doing command line in GS and he says, well, you know, why do I need R? I can do all these histograms and correlation plots. I can do them in grass also. So, you know, wh why would I use R? And but so I, every time I start, I try to talk with these people. No, no, look, guys, you can do also these things. And then I also tell the guys that do just R that the, the people just use R, you know, for everything. And I said, or oh, oh, Python. And I said, look, guys, you could maybe take a look. There's so much nice functionality here, and it's, it's a parallel thing. But you know, maybe you should consider. Um, if you see that this works, then you don't have to develop yourself. You just plug in that library. So that was kind of my dream is to try to put these two worlds. So that's why uh, I also call geostatics uh, where statistical computing means geographical computing in open source, of course. Uh, these are the previous meetings. Uh, by the way, everywhere you see a, a, um, um, so a blue, blue font and an underline, it means it's an embedded link, of course. And then if you want to see the complete list of courses, you, if you follow that, you'll see it. So we moved around, uh, around Europe, and we also went to Canberra in Australia. Um, we were in uh, Quebec City last year, so that was the first North American uh, geostat. And so, so we move around. So um, actually, the, we do a, a local geostat and a, and a big geostat. This is a class of there's a big geostat. Big geostat means we have parallel sessions in a local GS that we are usually about three lecturers and they are about the, 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 the quality uh, wise they're about the same uh, quality but if you really want to uh, have more choices and meet more lectures then you go to the big geostat which usually also there's a bit more people so a, a local GS that will be about 35 people and a, and a big GS that will be about 60 people so it, it's kind of almost like a small conference but it's much it's much much bigger fun plus you get out of out of it and I, I for many conferences it's, for me it's kind of a semi tourism I think many conferences just go there uh, you wake up and you know and, and then you see some talks and uh, but you never know what they did and you know you cannot access the data and things so I, I will say this is uh, much more fun than a conference. Um, so geos that is possible uh, mainly to uh, three groups of people. So first group of people is a local host. So in this case, this is Roger Bivan. So, and I would like to use this opportunity to, to really thank you uh, to you and to your colleagues, so, so to uh, Felix and Pavel for uh, uh, helping and for uh, taking the responsibility to uh, organize this event. And I know it's been, a, it's been a hard work and, you know, we're all here, there's no casualties and so I'm I'm, I'm very happy that, that you know, it, it, it came to life. So, so thank you for that, uh, Roger. Um, the second group of people you have to thank is the, the lecturers. Okay, don't ever forget that because these lecturers, they're volunteers. They, we don't have any contracts with them or we don't uh, really pay them anything for this. So, so they really come here as a volunteers. And if you, if you really like this summer school, eventually what you have to do, you have to go to Roger, thank him, and go to the lecturers and say, thank you for organizing this. This is really great. So, um, so please don't forget that. This is the uh, lecturers that were teaching uh, in last 10 years. I'm missing also some people here. I don't, I don't have all the photos. For some people, I have to chase the photo on, on, on Google or somewhere, and then, uh, then you get surprised when you see them in reality. Um, uh, like, for example, Felix. I mean, I, I was Skyping with her. I mean, I was um, uh, you know, talking. We had meetings every few weeks to discuss about Geo. So then I come here and say, oh, this guy's bigger than me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so some, some people might, might surprise you also. Victor is usually, he, he's a beast of uh, um, uh, a character with the long hair, and so, so it, people also get surprised when they see him 
in reality. Um, so, so this is the second group of people, and then uh, the third group of people that you should thank to is the yourself. So um, thanks to you, we have also geostat because if we didn't have enough interest, they, they, we wouldn't be able to organize this. So, so these are the three groups of people that if you want, if you feel like thanking, it says like, wow, I really like this uh, summer school. I really learned a lot. So if you want to thank, that's the order that you have to follow. Well, you don't have to follow, of course. I mean, it's... Um, okay, something about, also something specific about Geoset. It's an intensive course, except for today. Today it will be relaxed until about 6 o'clock. And then it becomes busier, busier. And then the next three days, very busy. And then the last day, you see, we left it open. So uh, open means, doesn't mean, okay, we go sit down here on the cliffs and just enjoy the sunshine. Uh, open means uh, we're, going to, we're going to create the last day. So we're going to do it together, um, which means that you, we will be talking in the coffee breaks, in lunches, uh, in the evening. We'll be talking, and then you'll tell us, okay? And then I might say a web form also and ask you, okay, well, okay, from all this stuff you told me, now we have to prioritize because we cannot satisfy everyone. That's impossible. And then we're going to put things. And there are, usually there are three groups of options. One group of option is that you go back to some of the uh, talks from before and say, well, we really like the talk, but it went too fast and then we didn't get it. Can we get that one more time? Yeah? Because you know how they say in Latin, repetitio mate studiorum. Repetition is a mother of uh, education. And so that's a one group of options. The second group of options say, look, I'm doing something very interesting and I would like to share it with my colleagues. Because most of you are actually also researchers. Then we say, okay, cool, that's really great. And then we make sessions of, uh, you know, maybe seven, eight presentations. And then you go and present. Okay, of course, it has to be relevant to this summer school. You cannot just go and present uh, some of your work because you, you have a lot of passion for it. You have to put yourself in the context. And, and then the third group is that we do something new. So the third group of uh, uh, topics is that you say, well, uh, I was exp I, I, it's not in the program, but for me it will be very interesting. I don't know, for example, Roger made the uh, R-Grass package or R-G-Doll and says, well, I want to learn more about the R-G-Doll, some tricks, and is there a chance? I say, yeah, there's a chance as long as we have enough people. So I will first collect all these things, then I will put them on a web form, then I send you, and then I want to get uh, feedback from you. Um, yeah, so this summer school, uh, it's intensive, and be prepared that it will be hard work. Um, most of you, I think, are PhD students. And so this is something, it's really uh, typical that you do uh, for PhD students. So um, lots of literature, lots of stuff, fast, top, top, um, you know, just sending you links and the key literature, you know, going like 200 pages in, in 20 minutes, you know. That, so that's the type of things you can expect here. And so be prepared. Your, your brain has to be, I think, uh, ready for it. It's like a, when an athlete comes and says, okay, now you are in a, some competition, your brain should be ready to run now. Um, so some of you might have uh, problems with that, but if you, are, if you are young researchers, I mean, welcome to research. That's how research works. So if, you, if you're going to do proper research, it's going to be like this. So very dynamic and uh, uh, very intense. Um, I will also have a special disclaimer, but only now I will, I, will, I will like to say that you're not going to be able to uh, manage, to master the tools. I think m my experience now for like running this just that I don't know, nine, ten times, is that usually people don't go like inside and go outside. Now I know raster package. You know, it just doesn't work. So the only thing you will get is you say, okay, I, had, I followed the raster package and I saw what it can do and how to do things. And now I know where to look for things and I know uh, what the, the developer's uh, main aims are. And so you, you just kind of like just to put you where to find things. And then, and then usually you go back to your office and you go back to your work and then you take all these materials and, and then you take your paste. Then you say, well, okay, I'm, I'm a bit slower. I get the things done, but I'm a bit slower. And then you take your pace, and you say, okay, now two months, I'm, I'm just going to try this. And that's what I usually see, that people just pick up lots of things, but they don't really master it. And then when I see them after one or two years, I say, oh, yeah, 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 you know, I, we made our own package. And my, my favorite type of students are the ones that after two years, I want to go and follow their course. 
that's my favorite type of students. There are there are people like that. So, so that's that's my favorite uh, um, type of outcome. Um, some principles of uh, geostat. They're, they're usually the questions people ask me about the um, ECTS, the the credits for the if you're doing a PhD. So I said no, we cannot we cannot do that, and and there's a logistical reason because we move from from town to town. Um, also, we don't come with a, a fixed program. I think most of our program is shaped by you, actually, because during the registration, you always say, I want more of this or less of that. And so we, we try to shape it, shape the program so it matches what you want. Um, you also notice that we have this uh, ranking system. And so I have a R script, actually, to calculate the average ranking. I, I mean, I could do that on Friday if you want to see. So I have a multi-criteria multi decision based on your registrations. Um, Actually, I, use, uh, I also use open source. The website is also open source uh, Drupal uh, content management system, and it's a uh, MySQL behind, so I can connect from R to MySQL. I can get your registration. I can do calculation. And then I, I calculate the ranking, rankings, and I call it a reproducible research because I put the R script below the rankings, so you can see how I calculate it. So if somebody says, hey, why am I you know, f f uh, 45th, and you're taking only 44 people, whatever, and... So I'm kicked out now. Why is that? And I said, well, you know, I just, the system calculated like this. I don't, what I got is what I calculated. So I look at the date when you applied. I look at the, how far are you. Um, so some people think, okay, it's like geostatistics. As closer you are, you have a better chance. Said, no, no, no. As further you get, you get a higher chance. Why, why do we give more uh, uh, chance to somebody who's f uh, further away? What do you think? Diversity. No. <laughs> well, yeah, it's uh, it is a it's a it's a, a side effect, let's say. Uh, okay, uh, no, we we uh, we want to reward people that are ready to put more effort to come to Geostat. So we say, look, somebody wants to come to from Australia here. So this is you know quite quite a motivation to do something. Like, so we want to re reward that. So that's why we we give more weight. Um, then we also look at the uh, citations. So we look at your citations. So you get people that have a higher citations. They have a, also they are uh, ranked better. Um, and and we also uh, have different. Uh, we have two groups of prizes. We have this uh, uh, UNESCO, I think, list of um, uh, countries which, uh, yeah, how to call them? Uh, like so, the countries that are developing or or uh, uh, in the need of uh, help. So we have a different set of prices. So we also want to balance there because you know if somebody is from Iran and really badly wants to come here, why shouldn't that person be able to come? And and if we put the if we, of course we don't have same opportunities, so we have to kind of average there. Um, we also work only with the laptops that uh, makes things uh, I think maybe like two or three times cheaper. Uh, on one hand, and I think it's more flexible, and I think it's good that you, you come with your laptop, you install everything, and next week you have things on your computer ready and you have all the exercises. So that's all the advantage. The disadvantage is that we take very little responsibility for your laptops, uh, for all the problems. If you, if, you, um, if you like to have things chaotically organized, it's, for me it's fine, but I'm not going to go and organize things on your laptop. Or if you, if you have problems installing something, and because of your administrator settings or whatever, that's really your problem. So please be careful. That, that's, I want to emphasize that also to avoid any possible conflicts or any disappointment that we don't take responsibility for your laptops. So if you still have some problems today, you can try to solve them. And from tomorrow, please don't go like, oh, yeah, I have this thing with my laptop. My, I cannot install this or I don't have a right for that or whatever. So that's... That's up to you. Uh, for example, I'm teaching Saga GS tomorrow, and there's no Saga GS for Mac uh, operating system. And I told that on the website, and I sent an email uh, explaining this to everyone. So if somebody says, hey, "I have a Mac now, I want to follow your uh, sessions," so, yeah, sorry, you can just you can watch. You won't be able to do it yourself. Uh, so that's that's uh, also important to emphasize. Um, we also we make no profit so to make it very clear we have a very tight budget and, um, and we really plan it so it's a positive zero. Um, we so far we 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 managed to run this so like six years or something, 
And so uh, I never, we never had any problems with that, but I have to emphasize that it's a, it's a really tight budget. And if you maybe feel that like, you don't get the best coffee or um, you, know, you feel like, okay, I have to travel with the bus or something, uh, just have that in mind that we don't, we don't make any uh, profit out of that. Just to give you an idea, uh, there's a one in uh, Sydney, now it's closed. It's, uh, so check this out, this is introduction to R. This is nothing advanced. I mean, I could teach this easily. Uh, so the cost is $2,000 uh, for two days. Okay? So just, just to make, give you an idea. So before you start, you say, oh, I didn't like this, you know, where the coffee is really bad or something. So just please think about it before you go to complain. Okay? Just, just look. If you want, I send you this link and then just think about it. If you really want to complain about it. Okay? Uh, well, I, yeah. Um, yeah, you can check. I, I'm not going to mention any names, but just to give you an idea. Did the, uh, so show me who, who followed our training already. Show your hands. Who followed our training? Okay, so you already have some, that's really great, and um, uh, so also for you, that, so, so the people that rose their hand, you can ask them Friday, Saturday, you can ask them, so, you know, was it, was it better than the course you followed? So you can go and check this with them, okay? Please. Uh, I'd like to put this slide, this is from Ezer's uh, inauguration talk in Munster. And uh, I, I kind of, this is my benchmark also for my work a lot, so I like to put the six pillars of open geodata. Uh, so open data in real time, open source uh, software, open reproducible procedures, uh, web-based, uh, open web-based uh, methods uh, for data and processing models. Uh, then uh, take care of the uncertainty, uh, put the uncertainty in the in the modeling and in the produce produce uncertainty as a data, um, and then is the uh, managed open open user and developer communities. So I I kind of also try to follow this as much as I can. But of course, if you work for a commercial company, I guess it's it's a bit different story. Um, uh, but nevertheless, I I do like to show this slide, and it, it there, there are six pillars, for example, I follow in my my research. Um, how do we move from place to place? Because some people ask, okay, where's the next geostat? I don't know where's the next geostat. So, uh, so what we do, we uh, after the geostat finishes, we ask we ask people um, uh, to uh, make a application for hosting. Uh, so we collect few nominations and then uh, we let the lecturers vote. Because remember, if you don't have the lecturers, you don't have geostat. So the lecturers vote. And then we pick up our location. Uh, usually, the uh, the lectures, the the geostat lectures, you have the advantage. So if you nominate your place, then you immediately have advantage. So then we don't even go into voting. So that's why, for example, we are in uh, Bergen this year. But if the lecturer says, "Yeah, I'm too busy. I'm not going to do this," then then we open the nominations and we we'll look for uh, whoever wants to host it. It's it's quite strict. I mean, I really want to see that. We have the right facilities, it's the right place, we're not too far from international airport. Uh, there's a local support uh, and so on. So it's quite strict, but then we go through that process and then and we open about, I try to open it about six months. It, should, it would be beautiful if it was one year, but that's, that's really, uh, there's uh, quite some work in between. So usually six months before we have it outside and that, gives you, that should give you enough time to get organized. Uh, time is money, if, you know, if, you, if you're late, to a few months, then yeah, it just starts growing. I think you noticed that with the accommodation in Berlin. Um, yeah, we have these four criteria, and then we publish about three months, and then we send you the invitation letter so you can get organized with your uh, employer. This is the map of uh, registrations, now the participants. So if you see some country, maybe, maybe on the end people didn't make it. So this was, I think, we got 70 registration for uh, this uh, summer school, but we are now, I think, on 
uh, 45 plus participants and we are um, um, almost eight lectures and there's a support staff. So I think we're about 60 people. Uh, so please be tolerant about that. 60 people is a, is a big, uh, big group actually to do things with jointly. And so the effect of that is uh, once the, the training session starts, you will go, hey, I have this error message. I hate error, right? You hate this R error messages. Why does, why does it happen to me? You know, it's like, and, and, um, and so you will go, hey, I need some help. So don't forget it that we're a big group. We're a big group and you have to, usually what I do, I tell people, uh, you have to, you know, just make, make your hand up and says, I need some help here, really. I'm stuck, I tried, I did my homework, I tried, and I, I think this is now beyond me, I need really help. Then you raise your hand and then you just say, okay, you're number one, and then somebody else, so you're number two, you're number three, you're number four, and then I stop. And then I go one, two, three, four, and I say, who's next? That's, that's how I discovered it works well, but because if you just go five of you, and then I just go randomly, then you feel, oh, it's not fair, he didn't see me and I was first. So then I, I do try to say, you're number one, you're number two, you're number three, you're number four, and then I stop. Because I cannot memorize more than four numbers, by the way, I'm, I'm really bad. I, I'm good in some other things, but memorizing numbers really bad. So immediately I wrote this code of the, of the door immediately when I came. So when Barry told me this morning, he says, I don't know you, what's your name? Slash eight uh, star? Uh, these are the lectures on this geostat. Uh, so um, I have to warn you that for Friday, this is very important, for Friday we don't have Barry. In, no, you're here. You, sorry. So we don't have Ezer and Robert. They are not here on Friday. So if you need to talk with them, you have to do it until uh, Thursday. After that, they're gone. And who else is gone? No, it's only... Yeah, and there's still Marcus Metz, that, so that's this guy here, so he'll be touching uh, a grass. He comes on Tuesday evening, and also ben, uh, ben comes on Wednesday. But they will be with us on Friday. So if you say, look, I would still like to get something from Robert on Friday, no, it's not going to work, he's not around. Um, okay. Oh yeah, we also, we, we, we get to meet each other too. We are like you, you know, you're meeting each other, you, you will make friendships and things. And also, I mean, I, I first time I meet uh, Robert, and I think Barry also first time is meeting Robert, and um, Ezra is first time in Berrien also. You are second time. But you two met, but I mean, he's the first time in Berrien, and you are the first time in Berrien, yeah. So, so we also get to, get to meet each other too, so we are also excited about that. Um, and I, I'm happy, I mean, two of you have been exchanging emails, right? I mean, maybe all, via the RCGO and off, off the RCGO, maybe for years, I don't know. And now you, you really have a chance to have a, just a beer together, right? So that's kind of a, uh, also a bit of spirit of uh, Geostat. Uh, so just to go through the program. Uh, so today you can look at your emails and if you want to do stuff, I don't mind, but uh, we only start the training sessions at six, so there will be demos. Uh, uh, Robert might run some demos, but so don't go, oh, where is the script? Can I do this? Or, no, it's not today. So that's what we do from, from tomorrow. And then tomorrow, you, I think m most of the cases, the lecturers, they try to follow your pace. I mean, only if they, I don't know if they have a really bad day, they, they would just go and mechanically run things. But usually lecturers will do some, show you some things, and then they will, you will start doing things with you. They will, it's hands-on training, so you will go together. And then you say, well, no, you know, slower, slower. And then, you know, lecturers will slow down a bit, and then, and then you have time to go through things. So, so don't worry about it. But today, so it's, on one hand, it's a relaxed day, but it's a long day, because most of you will stay also in the evening, and they will see you will you'll be really tired tonight. And, uh, and we want to take, now you're full of energy, so we want to take that energy today, because on Friday you won't be full of energy, but you will be full of enthusiasm. So that's how we, we balance it. Uh, and there's the excursion on Saturday, and m many people say, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't go to excursion. But funnily enough, on excursion, we do lots of one-on-one uh, -on -one talks, so you just walk and talk, and you can also brainstorm, and you can, you can discover things, and... So it's, it's also very, very useful. So I highly recommend if, you, if you're not registered for excursion, you should join it. 
Okay, so don't, because you know you, it's, it's, the, it's the same. It's still geostat, but you don't have a laptop or anything. You just brainstorm. Hey, I was thinking I would like to do this, and I say, yeah, yeah, maybe check that book. And there's a group doing it there, and then maybe you make some few notes or something. But it's very, very useful. So that's the idea of the excursion. We don't video uh, record or broadcast the excursion. Uh, the open day, so it's uh, it's shaped by you, and uh, we will publish the the program on Thursday afternoon. Um, so one example for uh, you, you know this map in the on the website. Let's see if I have the. So this is very, it's a very useful map, right? Now, how was this map made? So this map was made in R. Imagine. So, so there's a package, which is uh, developed by a colleague uh, from from Belgrade, and the package is called uh, Plot Google Maps. Okay, and so uh, immediately somebody said, "Oh yeah, cool! How did you make this in R?" And so what? That there's a, of course there's a code. So here's the code, and this was made by Felix. Felix around? No, he's yeah. So Felix made this, and uh, how did it work? He asked me. Uh, I said, you have to make a map of events. I said, how do you do that? Well, I said, check this guy from Belgrade. I know he has this package. And then I show him the example. And I said, just contact him. He's a colleague. And say, you know, how, how do I make this? And did you make a contact with him? or you? Tr yeah, you made a contact. And then he sent you. And then he played a bit. And he sent me, hey, yeah, that's what I made. And you see, he's the, he's the, he has to put some text. You put the text, and then you go plot Google Maps, and, and you get the icons and the text embedded and everything. You can even put a photo. And so, so you see, we are real R nerds. Uh, so even, even when you look at the registrations, as I told you, I have a script, and I process everything in R. And even these invitation letters, imagine that there's a, a ODF a weave. There's an ODF weave, so I make only one document. It has to be ODF, so open, uh, open office. And then I say, uh, I take the, you, the first name and the last name you entered, and then I fill it in in a loop. And so, I mean, who is going to make, who will go and make like 50 invitation letters by hand, right? Why, when you, when you can fin nicely program it? So then you just go and you create all the letters just by, by an R script. It's very robust, I highly recommend it. I was really surprised how this, did you work with the ODF weave? It's very robust, and it's it's uh, I, 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 it's like the S weave. It's the same, but it's a bit more user friendly because you go really quickly. You make this document, and you just say, "I want to put a first name, last name here." You can also put a plot. You can put whatever. So actually, what it creates is a XML. It creates a XML and then converts XML into a ODF. So it is very similar uh, to Tech. Sorry. Uh, yeah, for sure it's doable, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the, the emails, I mean, I use the Drupal functionality. There's a newsletter module, uh, but I do have to, I could write the, the, so I could write from R to, to Drupal, and then the Drupal has to have a trigger just to send the email. So, yeah, that will work. Yeah, but I think if you're a real R nerd, I think you can solve most of your personal and professional problems. Yeah. You can write poetry in R. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that, so that was the script. Um, now, from yesterday, I open also. This is really exciting, and please uh, go for it. Try it. Uh, it, it. It's a bit more challenging this year. I put a bit difficult data set. Okay, so it's really challenging. I want to challenge you. And you can work as a, a alone or in a group of two. We don't allow groups of three. Uh, so we started doing it from last year, and people were really excited. They really, I like that about people that in the beginning, they said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I said, look, there's a 250 euro um, award, and you go on the website. So um, you finish... You finish on a website, and it's a prestige because you, you can compete with the lectures also. And because lectures are also invited, and I hope you will also submit something. 
And this is the winner of the last year uh, uh, prediction competition. Okay. Um, so if you f if you follow the if you f the name is uh, Erin Hodges, sorry, Erin Hodges from Houston. And you, you see her writing quite a lot on us, GOC answers, lots of other Yes, questions. yes, very yes, yes. And uh, the principle here is we don't give award. Uh, uh, we don't analyze anything. It's really a mechanical exercise. So whoever gets closer to the target, it's very simple. Whoever gets closest to the the, predict, uh, the uh, validation values, it's the winner. Uh, RM, RMSC, so just the root mean square error, yeah. Yeah, it's true that there are multiple criteria, but yeah, just the, the first one in the literature, the first one in the literature. And so, so how it works is that you, you go in and do that exercise, so you have to read the, the text, of course, so here's the text, and you read the exercise. Uh, I, I run everything we are... Uh, a Google spreadsheet, so you don't have to even like download from spreadsheet. You just go and say, um, get the data into R. So if you just copy paste this without, of course, these things here, and then you can you can get the data, and then you can you can there's also covariate data. So here there's this covariate data which you can just load. You just do a connection, then you load, and and then when you want to submit the predictions, you go to You go and look at the validation points. Let me see. So here, here are the three tables. So one table is the uh, calibration data. You see this spreadsheet is locked, so you cannot do changes. Then there's the uh, points where we want to get the predictions. And, and then you, here is where you go and enter. And how do you enter? You just put your, you tell me I want to play. And then you, I add you as the, you can edit this uh, uh, spreadsheet, and then you put your name here, and it says, this is the predictions we made. It's a, it's a, it's a 4D data set. It's, it's really challenging. So it's the three depths plus time. And we are looking at the soil moisture. And it's a fantastic data set. I just got it recently, so it's a new data set. It's really high quality, and, and it will be very interesting. These people also, they say, oh, we, we want to see what happened in the end. So... Please go for it. It's a it's a it's a it's a nice brain exercise. Don't think that you will solve it in one or two hours. It's more. I will my estimate will be about six hours of work. So if you go in the evening, you can go and party downtown, or you can try to do the exercise. <laughs> or you can try to uh, go and party and do the exercise. No. Or you do the exercise and then you go party. Yeah, don't. One of the two. I, I always forget. My father used to tell me. First you do this and then you do that, but I always, I always forgot which one is the first. First the part and then the excess of the excess of the part. So is it all the same soil type? Uh, no, th there's, uh, yeah, good question. There are soil types uh, here. So here's the soil type. And, and you can make it, uh, so don't get me wrong, we will give a award whoever gets closer to the validation point. So you can just take a very simple model. And you just, well, I managed to produce something. Some people will go into something difficult, but the time runs out. And say, oh, yeah, we still need a uh, few more weeks. You say, yeah, no, it's finished. Uh, so, uh, so, so you can go, just go with something simple. Just, you know, first study the data set. Then I say, okay, what's the best strategy? We have a limited time. I have a limited stuff I can do. What's the best strategy? And you pick up the strategy, and you, if, you, uh, if it's a good estimate, you produce something, and then you enter. Uh, it's the average is over the full date, average so over over the full day. And these are different depths. So this is the um, 30 centimeters, 60, 90, 120, 150. So there are three depths and, and, and the, space uh, and time. And, and is the, uh, oh, oh, sorry, five depths. So is it are these consecutive days, or is it sort of every week one observation? Because it's not like it's not the days are not. Uh, that doesn't matter. So that doesn't matter. Yes, it, you. So, what is, so what is the prediction? Is the, is the prediction challenge to predict in time between things or in a new location? Uh, so 
you have to explore the data set and you have to re you have to yourself do a data screening and see what what are the what are the patterns here what do I have here okay and then we are looking for the uh, prediction set validation points which are space time and depth so you're not going to tell me right? yeah you have to you have to do data screening i can I, what happened last year also we were on wednesday we went to a a, a pub in quebec city and some people will wait till I take a few beers, and then they come to me and say, yeah, what about this data set? Look, I was thinking about... I said, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, it's not going to work. So only, only technical questions. If you ask me, is it on a day support? That, that's something I have to tell you, right? But if you say, well, is it like this? Is it... Uh, no. No, 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 no. Don't ask me anything more. I just I just want that people you know go and do it the best they can, and you can do it you can do it in a group of two, or you can do it individually. Some people like to work individually. Okay, I will talk about if you want I can uh, talk about the data set uh, maybe on the end of the day. I can I can one more time just go show you what we have, but I, I think it should be quite self-explanatory if you if you download it. There's about two thousand points to calibration. And you have to predict at 4,000 locations. So, is there, a, is there an R function that imports the Google spreadsheet into R? Um, so here, that's how you figure out how to do it. You just do a get URL, and it gets a CSV file, and then you just read it. Yeah. But it, when once you finish, then you, if you want to write it, I mean, it's possible to write, but then I have to give you also. Editing permissions, you have to put your password. So then the easiest thing is I just give you, you make a CSV file and you copy paste it. And okay? Okay, I'm finishing my things, I think. Uh, yeah, there's the, the G plus uh, community. Is any, anyone that's not on this community? Okay. So the thing about this G plus community is... Um, So about this uh, uh, community, is we have about 240 members now. Like, imagine I have to share like a URL with you, or I want to uh, share some screenshot or a, a code. So I can, if you ask, me, hey, what is the URL you use that for that? Well, okay, I'll send you by email. And I find it very inefficient. First, I have to find your mailing list because you're dynamic. You know, we had the people canceling, coming, etc. People also use different emails, whatever. So I have to find your emails. Then I have to send you that email, okay? And then you have to open that email and look at it. But if you use Google+, Plus, it's highly efficient, and I highly recommend it if you're not, if you're not yet on the Google+, Plus to, to register on that, because it's a highly efficient, so I can, I can send you the slides, the, the URLs. I can also, uh, you can also exchange. Imagine like this, you want to share something with us, and say, well, I know these people are developing something like what you're saying, and then you just put it in Google Plus, and you have kind of a, uh, it's kind of a blackboard. So it's, a, it's a also a blackboard for the course. So I highly recommend if you're not yet registered, please go and register. And you see I just posted yesterday that the uh, special prediction competition is open. So that's what I posted yesterday. And I also post that there's a live broadcast, but I also post if there's a new data set coming up and so on. So And also other people, I don't know. There are also other people posting here. You see there's uh, also people from outside of this group. So I, I, I find it highly efficient, and it's, we've been using it for teaching also for three or four years. And we have, a, we have a, here a, a block on for just about exercises, so I think it's also highly, highly useful. Um, so that was about that. Uh, so uh, tonight there will be a session on, on R and Python. Um, and I highly recommend it. We will do some baby steps, uh, and we want to level out. So if you feel like, wow, well, actually I use R a bit, but I never got any systematic introduction. So we do. I do a very systematic introduction. I mean, we tell you the story about R, and and um, you know we go slowly and try to do things. So I, I highly recommend it. Uh, 
it's I think you you made a good choice with R because if you look at the trends, it's uh, if you look I don't know five six years ago R was somewhere here, uh, and now it's it it really is on the top at least uh, based on the uh, activity. And I remember also like uh, four or five years ago I was so happy that we got this people that made R package, and like I think in maybe in few years I will go and ask. Hey, anyone here who doesn't have an R package, right? So, so there's already above 4,000 packages on R, so that's also amazing. And this is a, a journal which is based also on uh, m most of the articles are uh, compiled in uh, using uh, SVIV, and you can see the impact factor it just went. Uh, so I think now the most uh, most uh, the journal with highest impact factor in statistics. Uh, okay, so that was all from my side. Oh yeah, by the way, um, Barry said, I said, Barry, you know, maybe do our uh, a Python uh, uh, crash course in the evening. I said, Barry says, why do you need a crash course? You just search material. Said it's like this X XKCD a comic, uh, you know, so the guy flying in the in the sky and he say, well, how did you do this? I said, well, it's very simple, import anti-gravity. And that's how it works. So, uh, but I said, Barry, you know, it's easy when you know it, but you know, the people come and say, well, how do I start with Python? Where do I start? So, I, 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 uh, so Barry is also going to give you some uh, guidance um, in the evening. You know the XKCD, the comic? Did you ever listen to this? Like real computer science nerds and... Okay, so that's all from my side. Now I pass the floor to... Uh, Felix, just very briefly about the logistics, and I'll I'll keep this um, I'll keep this program here. So that's the page of the. Good morning. And I will turn off Welcome the recording.